everyone and welcome back to my wait that's not my intro hi everyone and welcome back to the shaley show hello i'm here to talk <laughs> i'm here to talk about a rendition of one of my favorite stories and one of my favorite christmas movies we all know about the famous book a christmas carol by charles dickens that focuses on ebenezer scrooge who is the stingiest man oh wait i just realized anyway i'll get to that in a minute so ebenezer scrooge is basically the stingiest man in town and he is ruthless he is cold-hearted he is mean he's not a very lovable guy although his nephew fred his sister's son does really care for his uncle fred really cares for his uncle because his mother scrooge's sister really cared for scrooge so every year fred tries to like invite uncle scrooge to dinner to christmas dinner every year he says bah humbug or humbug bah you know depending on the rendition you're watching every year he says no and seven years previous to the setting in this book the time in this book scrooge's partner jacob robert marley passed away on christmas eve present timeline in the book christmas eve scrooge is at home and the ghost of jacob marley comes to visit him and he says look dude you've got to clean up your act i didn't before i died now i'm in chains your chains are much longer than mine now because of what a shit you've been and you need to clean up your act so here's what i'm going to do for you as a friend you will have three ghosts visit you the first will come to you at the stroke of one the second at the stroke of two and the third or some movies say on the stroke of three some renditions say he's more mercurial so they'll show up in their own good time let me let me double check what this book says So I just double checked in the book, the ghosts do show up three nights in our app, midnight, first night, second ghost, midnight of the second night, third one, midnight of the third one. So that's where the 99 version had it right actually. Anyway, so basically Scrooge has to be visited by these three ghosts, listen to their teachings to be redeemed. And that happens. And as we all know, by the end of the story, he's a reformed man, he's better, he's true to his word, etc. so on and so forth. So George Scott. Muppet 1999. So I have watched four of the Christmas Carol, a Christmas Carol movie renditions. First one being the 1984 rendition with George C. Scott starring as Scrooge. The second being the Muppet Christmas Carol starring Michael Caine as Scrooge. The third being the 1999 version with Patrick Stewart. And the fourth being the Rankin and Bass animated version with, I'm not blanking on his name. with Walter Matthau as Scrooge. And the Rankin and Bass one is called The Stingiest Man in Town, but it's basically Christmas Carol. I would probably have to say that The Stingiest Man in Town, the Rankin and Bass retelling of Christmas Carol, and the 1999 one with Patrick Stewart. I hate saying that. Those two are at the bottom of my list. And I absolutely love the George Scott one. I love the Muppet one, but my favorite is the George Scott one. And I refuse, I now I refuse to watch any other versions of A Christmas Carol because of how bad the 1999 one was. And I love Patrick Stewart. I love him. Like most of the stuff that I've watched him in, I've been really enjoyed. And I've really enjoyed him in that in those roles like Jean-Luc Picard and Star Trek, Lord Yupa and Nausicaa from Studio Ghibli. I have loved him in most of the movies he's been in and I've loved his character. It really hurts my soul to say this because I love the George C. Scott Christmas Carol. I love the Muppet Christmas Carol. I love the Disney Mickey Mouse Christmas Carol. I realized I forgot that one so I watched Five. so like it hurts my soul to say that i hate a version of christmas carol and it's why i've avoided all other editions of christmas carol because it's like i love those ones so much the muppet one george scott and disney one i love those ones so much in varying degrees but i love those ones so much that like the idea of potentially hating one i can't do that and this 1999 version proved that for me as much as i love patrick stewart before i get into the critiques though even though i am disappointed in the fact that i did not like the 1999 christmas carol at the same time i wasn't surprised when i realized that it was a hallmark movie and i avoid hallmark christmas movies like the plague because 
I, I cannot stand them. I absolutely cannot stand Hallmark Christmas movies. When I see them on like popping up on my Netflix feed, I automatically say not interested, not for me, because I cannot stand them. They're too cheesy and it's like, I, I love romance stuff. I do. I really like romance stuff. But Hallmark Christmas movies are in a class of their own and I cannot. So with that out of the way, some of my critiques, ignoring the fact that this was a Hallmark movie, because I didn't realize that until I started watching that. Even though it had an amazing cast, some of the characters fell a little flat. Patrick Stewart, amazing. In some respects, he did do a really good Scrooge. But at the same time, it's like there were certain parts of it where it, like it almost felt a little bit flat. If I'm going to reference the George C. Scott one, let's say. George, like part of the reason why I love George C. Scott's Scrooge so much is because his redemption, like the redemption arc for Scrooge and the George C. Scott Christmas Carol is so powerful. It's a really good build up for the redemption arc and then right at the end it hits you. And it's not done in a bad way or a sped up way. It's at the right pace for the movie and it hits you right at the end and you're like, yay, I'm happy he's redeemed himself. Like, took you long enough. And with the Muppet Christmas Carol, with Michael Caine as Scrooge, you do have more of a gradual redemption where you see him start redeeming himself sooner on, sooner into the movie than with the George C. Scott one. You see Michael Caine Scrooge starting to redeem himself a little bit quicker or a little bit sooner. But with the Patrick Stewart one, it's almost like he had, it's almost like there were like a couple of little redeeming qualities to begin with. Like it almost felt like he was just grumpy, kind of more introverted rather than just being, yes, you do see him being mean and hard and stingy there are too many little scenes where it's like okay you're more antisocial rather than mean you know so that was one thing and there was like another little scene where it's like okay yes scrooge is antisocial he doesn't like people he doesn't like idle people but there was a scene and it's basically in like the promotional images of patrick stewart at scrooge where it's like he goes to strike kids who are caroling at his door and it's like he, no he would just scare like he wouldn't he this is so contradictory and it sounds contradictory but at the same time it's like yes he is mean he is stingy he is cold-hearted but he wouldn't put in the effort to l make it look like he was going to physically hurt someone he wouldn't put in that effort because he just does not care enough and the fact that like he goes to strike a kid who's caroling it he'll just like be like you need to get off my porch or i'm gonna attack find you you know that would be his motivation so that was another little issue and then the makeup and wardrobe for the ghost of christmas past was off the description of the ghost of christmas past was like oh too young looking to be old but too old looking to be young and they kind of got that look sort of right but it's like they made him too i don't want to say white looking but it's like it's almost like if someone were to apply like white face paint to themselves and like it looked fine but like it wasn't really done well and then it's like he has he's kind of glowy and it's like doing the white face paint and making him glowy and putting in him, him in white clothes a little too much a little too much there i didn't have too many issues with the ghost of christmas present like they basically stayed within that red curly haired guy with a green outfit on kind of santa-esque looking almost and then ghost of christmas yet to come the main thing is that the ghost of christmas yet to come is supposed to look scary and supposed to be foreboding because this is the ghost that's gonna tell scrooge like hey you're gonna die one day and if you keep on this track no one is gonna give a flying fight if you die and then you get like the whole build up to Ebenezer wiping the stone away from his gravestone from the grave plaque whatever seeing his name gets really emotional I'm sorry I'm gonna keep Christmas all the year in my heart I'm not gonna shut out the lessons that the spirits have taught and then we get the redemption and like the whole part like the whole part of it that sets this scene up is the fact that the ghost of Christmas yet to come is mysterious all in black shrouded we don't see anything human-esque about this ghost yeah every time the ghost of christmas yet to come points in the 1999 version we see a human arm it's like why are we seeing a human arm this isn't supposed to be a human-esque looking ghost well it's supposed to be human-esque in the sense that it's a human shape but we're not supposed to be able to see any like human aspects to it all we're supposed to see are the clothes is the long cape 
cape shrouds whatever it is we're not supposed to see any human-esque features of the body of the skin of hands and yet we saw that and then another thing that was just more silly rather than scary like i think hallmark was trying to go for a scary-esque feature to this but it ended up being silly more than anything is that they did like little lights where the eyes are on the actor or actress because it was a feminine hand on the actor on the performer for the ghost of christmas yet to come they did like little lights where the eyes are and it's like that just ended up looking making it all look silly it wasn't it wasn't done in a creepy way it was just like they're there and it's like what was the point of that i mentioned this earlier but with like the redemption arc and the build-up that scene kind of fell flat because in the joshi scott version and in the michael kane version when scrooge is shown the body and the bed scrooge has a very strong feeling that that's his body he knows that that's his body but he doesn't want to look and then in the 1999 version with patrick stewart it's like he has a hint but he ignores that hint and then just forgets about it or he doesn't really forget about it but then when he should he shown his gravestone that's when it's like oh that body was mine like your that body was mine and it's like yes it would that that's the point that's why the ghost showed you that body because it was you why are we question why are we now realizing that at this point and that was maybe 10 minutes ago in the movie so so that's where like that redemption art fell a little flat because it's like he's already scared because he saw the body in the bed that he knew was his scrooge did and the other versions and all of a sudden it's like he's now seeing his gravestone and then that just cements it. I was so upset at the fact that I did not like this version. I was so sad because as I said at the beginning of this video, like I love Patrick Stewart. Like he's a fantastic actor and in some respects he did a good job with this role with the script that he had and with the fact that it's a Hallmark movie. But I, I was so sad that I did not like this movie. It made me so sad. Like I, I had to rewatch the George C. Scott Christmas Carol after that so, to kind of like reset myself because I was like, you know, I need a good version. I need a version that makes me happy that sounds so weird that that version makes me happy but it does and i've been re-watching it a few times it's like the main movie i've been watching for a couple days now and that, that i've had on in the background while i do stuff because it's like the 1999 version really did not do it well well with all that said i'm gonna end this video here because i don't know what else to say i don't know what else i mean there's a lot of stuff i could say but i don't know how, how else to say it if you all have a favorite version of a christmas carol please leave it down below in the comment i would love to know what your favorite versions are and why thank you all for watching i hope you're all having a happy holiday season and that you're staying safe and healthy and i'll see you all in my next video